All right, it's your boy Fanon. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk some boxing. In this video, we're gonna talk about something that Cameron Duncan and Danny Garcia said. Two guys said about Errol Spence Jr. And, I mean, excuse me, about uh, Jerron Ennis and what Jerron Ennis is going to be able to do with Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, and guys all the way up to 160 pounds. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So uh, we have a really big fight coming up this weekend between Terrence Crawford and Sean Porter, a fight that is going to get us one step closer, hopefully to having an undisputed champion in uh, the weight division and the welterweight division, something we've been looking at for a lot of years. Um, however, uh, unlike what I would have said a year ago, a year and a half ago, the under whoever the undisputed champion is or winds up being in the welterweight division, whether that's Errol Spence Jr. or Terrence Crawford, there it may very well be the case that they are not the best guy at welterweight. Um, I uh, have been holding off on Jerron Ennis and saying that he's the best welterweight, and I'm going to continue to do so because I do think that he needs to prove it. He's not had the fights that Errol Spence Jr.'s had. He's not had the if Sean, Terrence Crawford gets past Sean Porter. Um, he's not had the welterweight fights that Terrence Crawford has had and, you know, definitely has not had the two division champions that Terrence Crawford has, but guys like Sean Porter, uh, Danny Garcia, the, uh, promoter who definitely, who, who works with, um, uh, Jerron Ennis, so you may have a little bit bias in saying so, are really adding to the chorus of people that are saying that the best guy in that division and may be one of the best guys or on his way to being the best guy in all of boxing in the very near future uh, is Jerron is Jerron Ennis. And Jerron Ennis out of Philadelphia, the, hey, I'm telling you, man, this guy is an absolutely incredible fighter. Danny Garcia said that he thinks that this guy is the future of boxing and is going to be able to uh, dominate the divisions of 147, 150, all the way up to 160 pounds. Uh, Jerron Ennis himself says that he believes that he's going to be able to get and you know win the title at 168 pounds. But the reason why I think it's important to talk about on a regular basis is because you know, he is in the world, in the division, in a position where he's going to be able to get to prove that provided these guys don't leave that weight class. First of all, Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford are both top 10 pound for pound fighters, like consensus top 10 pound for pound fighters. And they're also guys, or at least Errol Spence Jr. is somebody that will most definitely take on challenges and take on tough fights. Uh, he said that he would be willing to fight uh, Jerron Ennis, uh, Terrence Crawford himself, even though he was kind of hesitant on fighting Sean Porter, and that is what it is on that. He doesn't seem, but he, hopefully he, he can be in a position, because I don't think he can move much higher than 154 pounds, but he doesn't really have, um, basically put it this way, he doesn't have the Canelo, we don't have a Canelo Alvarez-like problem at 147 pounds. And I'll explain to you what I mean by a Canelo Alvarez type of, uh, type of uh, problem. Uh, we, there is no guy at that welterweight at that division that is going to be so protected by that's going to, you know, basically take over the mantle in that division and be so protected that he can jump around and move around weight classes and fight anybody he wants to say in anybody he wants to fight without anybody really saying anything about it. All the guys that are there at welterweight are going to need to fight for belts, and they've all proven that they will fight for belts. Danny Garcia fought. Uh, Sean Porter. He fought Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman fought Danny Garcia. He fought. Uh, he fought Sean Porter. Sean Porter fought everybody, including Ugas and Errol Spence Jr. Now Terrence Crawford, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter. These guys, Errol Spence Jr. has fought um, these guys as well. They all have proven that if they're in a position to be mandated by a sanctioning body, or if the money is right on the fight that they will actually take that fight. So uh, Air, uh, Jerron Ennis is currently, it, I do believe he's in the top 10 of all the sanctioning bodies at this point in time. And he's getting very, very close to the title. The only problem that I think that he may have is if for some, I mean, as far as getting a guy that may be considered at the time a top, top guy, is if for some reason Virgil Ortiz becomes the WBC champion. If you guys have not, uh, if you guys didn't know that, Errol Spence Jr., um, is the WBC champion, and uh, 
he just faced his man. I believe Danny Garcia was his was his mandatory, but that is happened. Um, that is going on a year ago that he fought Danny Garcia. So his next mandatory for the WBC is going to be coming up. And and Virgil Ortiz, who now is with Eddie Reynoso in Canelo's camp, is uh is fighting an eliminator to become the mandatory for the WBC for the WBC title. So I expect if that's the case, then the WBC is going to be just pouring all kind of favoritism on the top of, of Virgil Ortiz. That's not a shot at Virgil Ortiz. And if anything, it's a shot at the WBC because the WBC with Canelo's camp and Ren and Eddie Reynoso's camp, it's just those guys are off living in their own universe now. But as far as getting the uh, his hands on the other belts, I don't think Jerron Ennis is going to have a problem fighting and getting his, getting his hands on those belts and being at, or at the very least getting an opportunity to an opportunity to prove that he can beat these guys. Now, Danny, when Cameron Duncan was asked about him, he specifically said that he thought that that er, that uh, Jerron Ennis was a better fighter than Terrence Crawford, and he was like, "Look, man, I'm not." He said Terrence Crawford is a terrific fighter. Um, I knew he was a terrific fighter in the amateurs, uh, but Jerron Ennis really is one of these guys that is just comes around once every 20, 30 years, and he's that level of talent and. You know, I don't think that there's really been anybody that has been like that. And this is my this is my opinion of Jerron Ennis. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to beat Errol Spence right now. And I don't and I'm because I'm telling you with Errol Spence Jr. That for me is a is a is a matter of the style and the way that that um, that Errol Spence Jr. fights. You know, a lot of people say that it that um, Sean Porter is going to be a tough fight on anybody. That's what I say about Errol Spence Jr. That is going to be a hard fought, tough fight on anybody, no matter what the skill level is, no matter what the talent level is, because he's a because he's a southpaw that is a come forward fighter and a pressure fighter that has fast hands and is a very high volume puncher and is a very technically sound fighter that doesn't give you a lot of holes and doesn't give you a lot of loops, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities to capitalize on mistakes that he makes. And it's just, it's that style of fight plus the tenacity and the mindset of him that I believe is gonna make a very, very difficult fight for anybody, no matter what the talent level of the fighter is. People talk about, you know, there being different, you know, having different tools and how many tools you have. Um, Errol Smith Jr. has a good amount of tools, but the way that he uses them is just the way where he's just attacking, 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 and he can take a step back and box. So, you know, for me, I'd like to see Jerron Ennis. I don't know if Jerron Ennis can handle that at this point in time. I know he believes that he's ready, and at 27, what is he, at 28 fights? At 28 fights, there's a really good argument to say that he is. Um, Terrence Crawford, I think, you know, that I do believe is a more open victory for Jerron Ennis, because I think Jerron Ennis' strength, I think he's a part or bigger puncher than uh than terrence crawford i think he can do whatever terrence crawford can do and i also think that he may be now this is just me you know giving credit to his trainer and giving credit where he comes from i believe the fact that he is a philadelphia fighter and grew up in those gyms in philadelphia in sparring pros since he was a very very young age i think that that gives him a certain um i think that gives him a certain advantage over the more natural, not more naturally gifted, but a guy like Terrence Crawford, who's a very intelligent fighter, a very skilled fighter, but his athleticism and his talent is the overriding thing about him. I think Jerron is just as talented and he's just as talented. I think he's a little more fundamentally sound and he can, and I'm sure that he already has a game plan for Terrence Crawford. But as far as moving up to the guys at 150, 54, I think if Jerron Ennis moved up to 154, I think he could beat everybody at 154 right now. If he goes up to 160, I think he could probably beat everybody at 160 in a year, provided his body weight gets up there. But like I said, we're not going to have a Canelo Alvarez problem with him where, you know, we talk about how good he is, but, you know, he gets a pass for not fighting the guys that are that that may be the second and the third best fighter just because people think that they that he will beat him. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you hit the subscribe. Thank you guys so much for your support. And with that, I'm out. Peace.